The biggest convention ever held in this country was Longleat. Yeah. And it was a bit of a zoo, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I mean, that's, I mean, that's sort of quite interesting about, I suppose, about life. Um, I'd come from a soap opera, uh, Angels. And, you know, actors weren't really famous in England. You just, just were in a soap opera and it didn't really matter. Um, and then I got this part in Doctor Who and I'd done some filming and about six weeks after this, they organised a big convention at Longleat. And in my defence, um, I had no idea what to expect, but that's not a surprise because the BBC had no idea what to expect. So it was appallingly organised because they had no idea how many people would turn up. 40,000? 40,000 people turned up. There were traffic queues everywhere, right? And so was, that, uh, was anyone... I was at it. Was is it, anybody here? Oh, there were people. Oh, yeah, excellent, I mean, it excellent. was a nightmare. So you all remember. It was, it was a nightmare, wasn't it? It was a total nightmare, right? But for me it was weird because I was, like, sort of quite left-wing and I was just a, a young lad being an actor um, and uh, you know you weren't an American star and I lived in a council flat opposite Waterloo opposite the old Vic in a very run down estate and I and at, still at the time I was working in a pub because uh, you never know how long a job's going to last so I was still doing my Friday and Saturday night shifts uh, when I could at, at this pub down um, yeah down Clarkham Road so I wasn't like, I never threw it about that I was an actor. I just started appearing on television in Doctor Who. They thought it was weird enough I was in Angels. Um, and so the BBC said, we'll send a, a chauffeur-driven car to your house. Well, I said, you know, you won't. <laughs> You'll not send a chauffeur-driven car to my council flat in Waterloo, mate. <laughs> For starters, we'll make it, we'll, we'll meet somewhere. Because can you imagine, I mean, on Friday nights, you have no idea how smart England is now. You probably have if you're my age. I'm 50. No, you're not 51. Right. Same age as me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, on Friday nights on that estate in, in Waterloo, everybody used to go down the pub. Um, 11 o'clock, the bell would ring. They'd all get on the table, sing um, God Save the Queen and whatever. They'd all pile out into the quadrangle and they'd all beat each other. Sh beat each other up. <laughs> if the police came into the quadrangle, they'd they they throw petrol bombs at them, really, right? Um, and on Saturday morning, you'd wake up and some of the doors would have caved in, right? And you see, you didn't, you didn't want to show you had any money. You sure as hell didn't want a BBC car, chauffeur-driven car arriving to pick you up, I can tell you. So, <laughs> so I arranged to meet this car. Um, somewhere else, and that was fine. And then we went down to Longley, and we got stuck in all this traffic. And then we got there, and there were all these raw marines to look after us. It was—I mean, it was ridiculous. You had two raw marines on the side of you to take you anywhere, and and the whole thing was just—I um, don't know about you guys who were there. It was—it was, it was just—it was peculiar, wasn't it? <coughs> yes. I mean, for me, it was like being dropped on an alien planet. It was, it was much more strange than anything I ever was in in Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> because there was so many army around. What, 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 why were they what? were all pretending to be unit, I think. They, it was all no, they part. weren't. They were real raw marines there as the, well. They, well. Didn't they dress some of them up? I seem to recall yeah. people who were there. Yeah. Chris, Chris, you weren't there, were you? No, I don't think I was. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> I paid bad money to go you there. You paid bad money. <laughs> I ended up commandeering, I felt so sorry for the people there that I ended up commandeering Betsy and going along the queue saying hello to people because it was, it was, you know, it was just, it was just, the BBC had got it so wrong. But it would, but they got it so wrong for the right reasons. It was the start of Doctor Who all over again. If you want to say when Doctor Who started all over again, it was long lead. Mm. That's when Doctor Who started again. It was dead before that, and from that point onwards, that was, that was the kick on the heart. That, the, 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 it was the kick into the BBC's guts that made them think, oh, well, Doctor Who is alive. Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, time has beaten us. Having talked about Longley, I think this is... I love conventions like this where yeah. all the attendees can spend some time with you. Uh, and it's been great to spend some time with you again up here, Mark. Can I have five minutes for any questions? Has anyone got any questions they want to ask? <laughs>
Because I'm here. Go on, go I'm on. Here. So five minutes. Just ask me a question if you've got a question. No, if you haven't, we're finished. There. There's a question. What does kangaroo mean? Well, I should know, shouldn't I? Because um, I know I should know this, and it's pathetic that I don't, because it's just lost in the mists of time. Because it was when the white people went to Australia, wasn't it? And they asked the Aboriginal and they went kangaroo, and it wasn't anything to do with kangaroo, so remind me. What, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's or right. Yeah, no, it's something like that. It's something like that. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yes, no, it's 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 a weird part of the world. Yes. How many of you here have been to New Zealand or Australia? So yeah, it's uh, quite a few of you actually. This is a hell of a long way. Um, how many of you have been to New Zealand? No, it, it's it is. I tell you a little bit about New Zealand. It's a very weird country. Um, it is. I mean, a bit like Doctor Who. It's one of the weirdest countries I've ever lived in. Because it's so isolated, um, it has this clean and green. I mean, presumably, if you think of New Zealand, you think of big open spaces and green country and Lord of the Rings and that, right? Well, it's not like that. We have the most polluted river in the world. Um, it's because of farming runoff from dairy. We are the biggest dairy exporter to China. Dairy is our gold. Um, for Australia, it's minerals. But dairy in New Zealand is our gold. And they're dairy farming everywhere where they shouldn't. Um, people are lovely, but um, you can't go for a walk anywhere. The whole country is locked up. You can go for a walk in a country park, but you can't go for a walk like you can in England. You can't just go out into the countryside. All the farms are locked up. So you can drive round and see the countryside. You can't go for a walk. You can go for a walk on a path. So it's, 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 it's very strange coming, coming from England. Um, other weird things about it are you never hear any news, international news. Um, they're not interested. They're so far away. So I listen to sort of like World Service and Radio 4 on the internet and things. Um, but they have the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> um, it, no, no, only sort of. I think at one point we were second to Afghanistan in um, lack, of, um, lack of internet access. Um, but on the other hand, it has huge pleasures because of that. It is old-fashioned. Um, it really is. It's like stepping back in time. Um, no public transport system. All the trains have stopped, all those sorts of things. It's a car, it's a car place. Carbon footprint would be seven times less in London than if I lived in New Zealand. Um, so clean and green it isn't, but it, lots of open space it's got. Um, and it do come. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to go. It's fantastic. The mountains, some, it, what's amazing is you can go, you can, you, you can like ski board or ski and go swimming in a mountain lake, swimming in the ocean, in one day, amazing temperature differences. I live right at the bottom where it's very cold, but three hours from me there are vineyards, amazing vineyards, and it's hot, just three hours away from me. It can be 30 degrees where it will be 12 or 14 degrees where I am. So incredible differences in temperature, incredible difference in latitude and in, 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 you know, in altitude. Um, but no, really beautiful. One of the amazing things about my life is I've been to so many different places. And how I've ended up in New Zealand, I don't know, but it's very nice, so do come and see me. Or perhaps you can come back and see us again. I will. I shall be, I shall be back in December because I'm doing some things with Big Finish. Um, Peter, Janet, Sarah and I are doing... They're, out, they're coming out one a month now, aren't they? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing two more in, more in December. And that's lovely to do. I mean, it's lovely to see Janet and Sarah and Peter. It's fantastic. Sarah's husband is doctor for the English rugby team. <laughs> Um, I think Sarah has a slight interest in rugby, <laughs> but not enough for her to want to go to every World Cup game. And I don't know whether you know, the World Cup is in New Zealand next year. Next year. Yeah. So Sarah's booked herself in for a week with us. Oh, so. Excellent. <laughs> she was, I interviewed her here what, in March. All right. She was in good form. Her and Claire Kiffin. Oh, so she was before your time. Yeah. Right. We have to end, Mark. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Mark Strickland. <laughs>